Hello everyone and welcome back. This is going to be part two of our planetary survival series. Uh, we're going to get a couple of things done. I'm going to show you, you can uh, pull some resources out before we start building this monstrosity. You're going to conveyor junction, you don't need any more since the reactor is gone. Pull it down, grab the components out of it, drop them off. We moved our stuff up so we got some room in here. And we are going to address our storage issue by building this thing. It will give us more space and we can actually store a lot of our components in this ship. Uh, this timer block you do not need for anything. Uh, we've got some more components here. Yeah, you can actually access your conveyor system here. Uh, if you find uh, One of the problems with this is it's harder to drop off your stuff. You actually have to like do this as opposed to just like shift clicking, which is what I prefer to do. You know, you can set up your, if you do a search properly, one thing I'll actually do is this is one of the main things I do. There's no reason for the L and you don't have to move your hands. If you just highlight steel, you've got steel plates. So most of your containers that you store your components in will have steel plates in them at almost all times. So you just do that, uh, steel tubes as well. So that will give you your thing. So even if you're up here, for instance, you can click this, you can click that, do that, and then just drop off all your stuff. Easy hints for getting rid of your uh, things quickly. It's a lot faster than finding it in a thing and then dragging them one by one all over. These catwalks you don't want to take apart completely, uh, but you want to bring them down so you can get to the tubes and a decent number of the interior components <coughs> through your plates. Sorry. One thing you do uh, one note here about the welding speed too, if you see how quickly this kind of comes down, if you're trying to sort of weld down to a point, if you have times five welding speed and an elite welder or grinder, uh, especially grinder when you're bringing things down, you're gonna have problems uh, doing that, which you will often do on decorative designs later on, like you'll build a steel catwalk, you'll use a blueprint, it'll fully build a catwalk for you sometimes, depending on how you do things, and uh, you want to kind of rip them down a little bit, and that can again be a problem if you um, are using elite welders on times speed, times five grinding speed. Right. So do that. Pull this guy back up. Drop off all those. And now, we'll, uh, what we're going to need is a lot of motors. So one thing we're going to need is. Uh, actually, we're going to do the other side anyway, because I have plans over here. Oops. Um, it doesn't really matter. Also, we have, again, all of these tubes and grids, which we're going to need. I'm going to leave them in on that, and I'll just pull them off as we need them. Uh, what we're going to do over here is we're going to, again, use X3 Jetpack. Uh, we're going to build a hookup for our two early game ships here. So we're going to want this engine out of our way. So we're going to use this guy. We're eventually going to grind it and drop all of these components on the ground because 1136 motors is insane considering you can only carry 46 or so on this inventory setting. Um, so we're going to be constantly running over and grabbing parts from there, grabbing parts from around the ship, uh, from our cargo container. Let me get this guy built. I'm going to show you the basics of uh, this before I go into time lapse. Um, you can actually chain, toggle the option to only see buildable tiles if you come in here and you do this. You can also choose to keep projection because if you fully complete it, it'll delete the projection. So if you're going to build a second one, or for instance, uh, the ship incorporates a um, repair projector inside of it, uh, you want to keep projection on so that if you repair your ship, it doesn't delete the projection, you have to load it back in and realign it. So uh, depending on your needs, you can do that. But now it only has the one tile that I can build. So it's a little easier to build from here. And what you're gonna do is a single left click on the tile will spawn it. And now I can build all those tiles since that tile's in place. But one of the problems with hand building uh, a ship from a projection is building around it and not be able to get inside and finishing this. For instance, if this tile ended up being encased with other tiles, I would not be able to build it. So you kind of need to take it a little slow and then once you place the tile, you can hold left click and build it. And then same thing here, you want to do that. And then now it placed that tile, so now I can build those. 
So you want to be a little more slow and methodical. And if you hold left click, or if you lock on your welder, it will start building tiles. So again, because of the, the welding and grinding speed, you might want to even use uh, crappier tools, essentially, uh, so that you don't overbuild things and cause yourself headaches in the future. So I'm going to build this thing in a time lapse because it's going to take me you know, quite a while to build. Again, if you really don't like this process for the early game while you're building this thing, feel free to uh, go out and edit your settings on your world and boost your inventory to times 10 and or your grinding and welding speed boost those. And then later you can dial them back down if you really feel uh, if you feel like the way that I'm and playing is a little more to your liking as opposed to just having tons and tons of stuff in all your ships all the time. So I will catch you then. All right, so here's our time lapse. Uh, this was a 60 minute or so build that I compressed four times and got it down to about 15 minutes. So uh, the first thing I start doing is pulling apart the large engines on the lander. Uh, I start with the left engine, but realize that I want to take down the right one instead. Uh, I'm going to rip out some of the walls on the lander, and behind the cargo containers that we've been storing our items in, uh, there is a empty space that we can throw a tube on or two, and put a conveyor block or maybe a, a, an extra cargo block so we have some more storage space at the end of the tube, and then we can throw a connector on bottom and on top. Now. That hookup will allow us to con uh, more efficiently use the limited space and resources that we have to connect the gremlin that we're currently building and the Midas, which is our mining ship, which we will build second after this, using this ship we're building now, which will speed up the process from this hour that takes by hand to something like five or ten minutes at most once we get everything established. Now once we get the uh, connectors hanging off the ship, we'll have one on the bottom for this ship one on the top for our miner, and we can hook up both ships at the same time, charge them, mess with their inventories, all that fun stuff. What we'll be lacking is some more advanced features like Tim for inventory management automatically, and uh, sorter blocks. Sorter blocks are very useful for controlling the flow of your base's resources. Generally, when I have my miner hookup for my starting miner, uh, when the, we get the regular base established, you'll see it there's a sorter block underneath the connector. And what it does is it directly drains the miner into the base storage. Uh, that allows you to just hook up, let it quickly drain everything, and then you can fly back out and do another mining trip as quickly as possible. Sometimes like 10, 15 seconds really, and it'll completely drain everything. Because one way that you can, especially on a mining ship that doesn't have a huge amount of cargo space, and you gotta use more than just a cargo hold, if you use the connector at the end of basically a line of connected cargo holds, you can uh, use the drain function on it and it'll drain everything through it, uh, which will start filling up all the cargoes in between. So to the gremlin we're actually building here, uh, you can see I'm laying down all these blocks. Uh, eventually I will turn the projector off, which I just did. I think I will be building a button at one point where I can just toggle it on and off with a button which is uh, very convenient, very easy to do. Uh, it's not expensive either, so you can just throw one down with the components you have and not have to think twice about it. Now, the reason I did that is, uh, as I have explained, and I think right before this started, you have come into issues with the projector permanently on where you'll place blocks that you don't need to place. See, there's my button panel that I uh, toggle it directly to the connector, so every time you push it, it toggles it on and off. Now, if you leave the projector on, you'll lay down blocks accidentally, basically, and without finishing uh, the block that you were working on. And that can cause problems because you won't be able to reach it. So if you toggle off the projector after placing some blocks that you want to build, then just work on building those blocks. You won't have to worry about that. We'll also do that with the base once we get the projector set up for it. We'll go in there and we'll manually uh, use our hand, hand torch and we will place down the blocks that we want to build and then we will grab our gremlin and we will come back and we will use it to actually build the big components without worrying about the large area welding tools throwing down all kinds of nonsense that we weren't interested in throwing down that might block us 
So you can see I'm working on right there. There's a, I built in four projectors into this thing. Uh, one of the projectors has the projection that we're currently using to build it built in, which is that bottom projector that's blue. That one is basically the repair projector. You'll see it in the uh, control panel list. That always stays on with the buildable, uh, show only buildable and keep projection options always toggled. So as long as the ship has power, anytime you break it, it'll immediately throw the projection up so you can repair it quickly and easily. And one of the things that uh, you can do with that is once we build our um, welding wall, we can use it to, if we knock off our tools, which will happen multiple times, I assure you, they're very, very sensitive to damage. So if you're going too quickly or you even spin the ship too fast and bang it against something, you will explode them, which is, another, which is a good reason not to keep very many or any components in the actual tools themselves, especially if you use the grinding version you want to use that connector on top and have it set to drain all simply to pull all the things out while you're grinding a part of ship. So if you break off your tools, you don't lose a bunch of components because they'll just get deleted when that happens. Now, if you have a wall that's toggled on and it's connected to your base to your normal component stash, if you walk up, uh, if you fly up, fly your ship up to it, you can uh, have the wall toggled on automatically through a sensor, leave it on all the time, or use your um, remote control through the control panel uh, terminal system, which I'll show later, where you can toggle it on yourself. And uh, it'll just repair everything for you, which is really nice. And it's the best way to build small grid ships. Actually, it's the best way to build any ship later on once you build the wall big enough, especially since the, uh, the welding tools for ships are very cheap to build so you can build a 50 by 51 and it really doesn't cost that much to build and it cuts the time to build a giant ship from a projection down from hours and hours down to a couple minutes really um, but you see I have those extra projectors one of them like I said is a repair projector there's three others and those three others you will be able to load in things like say uh, the Midas Mark 1 which will be our mining ship or more importantly we'll definitely use it for our Midas Mark 2 which is our going to be our platinum mining ship that we'll take up to, this, to the moon to grab platinum and then come back with it. You load in those projections and project them out. Uh, you go to one of your extra hot bars, three, four, five, six, whatever, and you load in all the projector commands onto it to, very, to more quickly and easily uh, align the projection the way you want it to the front of the ship there. And you'll see soon when I um, armor the front of the cockpit there above those engines, you'll see one flat yellow block and you'll use that block to build basically a sprue off of uh, and you bring it out to meet the projection that's floating in the air in front of your ship and then from that point on you can actually push that projection into the wall and then back up slowly and as you back up the wall will just 3d print your ship your ship for you while you use this guy and since this guy is designed to carry a lot of weight he can pretty much build any small grid ship uh, Unless you're unless it's really heavy and has no of its own atmospheric thrusters, most of the ships that you build that are going to be really heavy should have some atmospheric support, so it, you can build, eventually build them. But uh, you, have, you you have to watch your weight for sure, depending on what you are building. Now, you see, I'm grabbing a bunch of components. The the engines are one of the more annoying things to build uh, for atmosphere. You need a lot of motors and heavy components to build them. So uh, it's nice though that you are supplied with tons of motors with the lander so you can build multiple small grid atmospheric ships pretty easily off of the starting uh, components that the lander comes with it just takes a lot of trips to do I mean you only carry like 30 of the th 30 of the things on a standard realistic inventory which is not a lot so we're cruising along here We've got another five or six minutes uh, of sped up time to build this thing uh, you can see the batteries there. I'm not ever gonna finish the batteries until the time lapse is over. I'm gonna fill up the batteries. Uh, you can, like I think I might have said before, if you just tap once on something you're building with your hand tool, it'll throw every component you have onto it. So you can just dump your components onto it and then go grab more and come back and then work on welding it all together at one go, depending on how you wanna build, uh, which I'll do with the batteries, it'll take three trips per battery, since you can only carry eight cells, 
and they require 20. So I'll go and I'll fill up all the batteries, but I won't complete them. Uh, they start with a 30% charge, but as soon as you complete them, they'll start getting used. Especially when you get ready to cut the ship off, you have to turn your engines off, or you turn your engines on to keep it aloft. So you uh, want to be careful not to waste any of your power. When in the early game, you are going to be very limited with your power. That's going to be your biggest constraint early on. Uh, power and not even so much resources, because uh, you can uh, you can rip apart motors and build almost anything you need early game. And I'm going to fill in a couple things here by hand. Um, I know how the ship is built, and that's one of the disadvantages of using a projector, especially someone else's, is you don't actually know every component of the ship. So what might be helpful to people is to go into creative and uh, take this, if you want to play with this ship itself, just load it into creative and look at it and rip it apart and try to figure out exactly what all the components do and why they're there. Most of them serve a purpose. Some of them are decorative or just there just because. Mainly the vents on the front have no real reason to be there. I just put them there for decorative reasons. Um, most of the armor plates are there for, half of them are there for a reason, half of them are there for decoration because I like my ships to look nice. I feel like I actually do a better job at playing with my ships when they look nice to me. Like I, I like the look and the feel of the ship. I've done multiple iterations of this fabrication ship and I was never happy with any of them until I built this one. And once I did, I just felt a lot better flying and I really enjoyed actually getting in it and using it to build things. Uh, but with the armor plates, it's important to my third iteration of a fabrication ship, I think right before I built this one, I completely armored the entire thing and it's really not feasible to do that on small grid ships. I've never really seen it been able to do properly simply because it's already such a small ship, putting a bunch of armor around it just adds so much bulk for such little reward basically uh, but what you do want to do is not is avoid not armoring your ships at all simply because the amount of damage that you will cause on accident uh, doesn't make up for the slightly enhanced performance of not actually at least slightly armoring your ship for instance when we build the miner especially or even this guy if you look at those large engines on the back if I didn't have armor armor around them, like kind of like like little strips of plates and stuff, if I turned too hard and banged my engine against a wall and broke it, and I was actually loaded and I needed that engine, I would crash the entire ship and basically lose it. So that extra weight that basically means oh I can't carry any, an extra few hundred armor plates is basically keeping me from having to rebuild the entire thing potentially by hand, saving me an hour of work if not more, just by making sure that I keep some of my carrying capacity down a bit by adding the extra armor. And especially when I build my miner, you'll see I built it and I can fly it myself pretty well without any armor at all. Um, but especially for newer players, you don't really want to take that risk until you know exactly how, you, how to fly the ships that you're in and what they can handle and you've had a lot of practice with it. Because if uh, on my miner especially, if you bang the engine block in the back against something, you can lose almost all your engines and a battery or all of your batteries uh, without the if there was no armor stripping around it, and that would cause a lot of problems for you uh, for not much saving a saving of weight basically. I mean, you carry an extra thousand, a couple thousand ore, it's not worth risking losing the entire ship. Especially if you're, again, newer and you haven't done a lot of mining trips. So we're about done here. Uh, I'm going to finish up a few more plates, looks like. I think I missed one plate and I can't find it for a minute. I eventually find it. But again, like on the front, those control panels seem more decorative, but they're actually very important to uh, the maintenance of the ship overall. Because sometimes you don't actually have a way to access the terminal on the ship to mess with the control panel uh, and using those exterior control panel blocks you can actually directly access the ship so you can do things like turn off your engines from outside without hopping in the cockpit or you can control uh, you can get in there and write the right over the programmable block so you can set up tim or 
your LCDs on the ship without having to hop in. It just it adds both a realistic feel to the game where, hey, there's a control panel for the maintenance person who can work on the ship, and also literally for you as the maintenance person, you might actually need it for um, extra access. Again, that's why there's a control panel on our little projection rig there, because I could access it through the, um, the inventory system, but actually it slows you down a little bit, not to mention the fact that if you place a projection wrong. Welcome back. We've got this guy built. Everything I'm, except for the power cells on the, um, the batteries, basically. I loaded the power cells on. I haven't fully constructed them, though, because as soon as they're constructed, they all start draining battery power. Uh, whenever you build a battery, you get like about 20% of its maximum charge for free. Um, so I just build those up and wait, and then, because um, we're, we're going to have power problems at some point. So we're going to do what we can keep that from becoming an issue. So what we're going to need to do is build our hookup. So we're going to build this out. And we're going to build a small cargo container here. You could use a, um, a conveyor block. That'll give you that. But I think small cargos are similar in price for resource-wise. And like I said, we're going to have storage issues at some point. So we really need to uh, ensure that we have the extra storage space for what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and load this guy up with parts, steel tubes, metal grids. So we're going to have to kind of hand build this real quick. And then once this is built, uh, we will throw a connector on the bottom. Actually, I can frame it out right now. I think I have steel plates for it. So that's going to be our um, gremlin hookup. And then on top will be our Mi Midas Mark I mining ship hookup. We need steel plates for the connector. Since it's an outside part, uh, inside parts generally require the interior plates as the name implies. So we need, uh, that's the one thing I think we're gonna be short on. Wait, I have some down here? That's not going to be enough. You saw me rip that apart. I think I got some interior plates there. I'm going to leave that chair just in case because I might need it. Um, not likely, but one thing you can use the chairs for uh, is energy. I think they changed it, but I believe you used to um, drain energy just to quote unquote stay warm. So if you went AFK, even in oxygen environments, eventually your suit would lose power and you would just die. So you'd have to like sit in a chair. Um, basically use the cryopods nowadays for that anyway. So, so what we're gonna need to do is turn our assembler back on and produce some interior plates. No, assemble interior plates. How many can we build? need these for, that should be enough. We need those for our tubes and cargo pods and all that good stuff. I think we're going to need some of those, maybe large ones, some motors, interior plates. Let's go check to see what we got all this. Small steel tubes, construction components, computers, displays. Computers, displays, construction components is another large factor for uh, small steel tubes. Yeah, so when you do all your conveyor systems, um, early game you're going to want to limit it to tubes and uh, cargoes and conveyor blocks. Um, later on you can get some fancy stuff done with sorter blocks and things, but those are super expensive. I actually did a test and uh, the base I want to build is entirely too expensive. You actually have to get a little, this little thing kind of set up first or you won't have enough um, production. Disassemble. Let's get 20 more of those going because we need a little more iron. So we're about to set up. Once we get this set up, we can um, get the miner built and then we can start bringing in some resources. The first thing we're going to do though as soon as 
this connector is established is we're going to get a solar array constructed because a solar array is going to be kind of a huge one for us because uh, we're going to start needing power because uh, this guy um, these small ships kind of do burn through a lot of power once you start flying them around currently we can idle for like literally a month forever Oh no, my constructors are working. When the assembler is not doing its thing, we have like 30 days worth of power. So we are going to need some solar. We have enough for, I believe it's at six solar panels. I think you can also rip apart your power cells to make more solar panels or vice versa. And these similar supplies to construct. Alright, so there's a tube. There's a tube. Construction components and construction components of steel plates. And I'm gonna make us a nice little walkway here, so let's kind of run all the way around. Gonna make shift the base real quick. So we're gonna need we need to get a little bit established before we can um, the cargo container is so heavy in here. Before we can start working on our bigger base, since it's gonna be rather expensive to build and we want to kind of get established with a large cargo relatively quickly uh, before we kind of move into the base simply because we're going to need that kind of storage. Alright, so we just need a bunch of construction components, fuel, uh, um, we're probably going to need to disassemble some more motors as soon as we get this established. We won't have to disassemble anymore once we get our um, miner built, which might take a minute. Also, but we're going to use the um, we're going to use the gremlin to build it, which will speed things up considerably compared to that. Took about an hour, I believe, uh, for me to construct that gremlin from scratch by hand. Um, I, I believe I'm sure I talked about it in the time lapse over. Lay um, in which you can toggle off the uh, projector in order to not kind of get in your way like I was probably explaining at one point where it's hard to get in sometimes. So it's going to take a minute. So what we're going to be planning on doing is once this is built we'll be good and we will expand, we can expand the base a bit by ripping out some plates under the refinery and behind the assembler to add some efficiency mods to make them a little burn a little less power and do a little better work for us because uh, they're really cheap so they're worth building pretty much all the time and once we get all that established we will get some mining trips going have our refinery working we're going to build an arc furnace uh, which will allow us to burn through the, the cheaper metals such as iron especially and nickel and cobalt really quickly. Uh, more so, I use arc furnaces almost exclusively for iron. Let's see, eight, seven. Seven is where I put my refinery systems. So we have an arc furnace, we have a refinery, we have our assembler, and then we're gonna have our yield mod, our power mod, and the speed mod, which I never use anyway, so I don't know why I bother putting on the hot bar. So there's our refinery and we're gonna attach our arc, arc, arc furnace right there next to it. Let's see if we have the resources for it and get one constructed real quick. Need more of these. Production. Assemble. Disassemble. So we're gonna need, we have tons of motors so we can just willy-nilly rip them apart. Give us a lot of nickel. So in the large tubes, uh, something like two or was it four? Computers. A lot of those. Construction components, four motors. Four motors. Again, we need more construction components. We should probably wait to get the connector built first. We can use a bunch of our steel plates, of which we have plenty. And is it gonna? Okay. Oh, I only need a couple. Construction components, so I might as well finish the arc furnace here. 
Okay, he's established. So I will have to go find iron ore, which will be our main first thing to get once we get the miner built. And in the meantime, we'll do these and see how many we need remaining. One more. So we have just enough here. Perfect. All right. All right so this guy is built. Uh, what we might need we're going to need some extra space. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to finish this guy up and I will explain a bit how he works while I make some room and then dock it to the, our makeshift station here. So now our first battery is online. It's got some extra power shoved into it. So it's got, it's already got two notches. This battery's always hard to get. So once we get these built up, uh, we'll have to sort of charge them from the batteries on the lander, which will disappear rather rapidly once we start using this thing and flying it around. Because atmospherics burn through a lot of power to stay aloft. So we're gonna need, I, we already saw uranium, so honestly we're set on power forever now, so we just have to go get it once we get the miner built. Alright, so I did turn off the engines, as you probably saw multiple times just to make sure they're not drawing power while they're idle. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're going to toggle them back on so it stays aloft. You can drop it from there. It's The ship's more than sturdy enough to handle that kind of drop, but you might mess up your frame and all that, so I'll just do that. It'll float. Detach it. Now it's its own grid separate from that grid. So we're gonna come up here, gonna hop in the cockpit, and we're going to open our terminal and go to info. Down here, Gremlin Alpha. So we rename the entire grid. So when you uh, when you actually use this menu in the future, uh, if you're not in the ship, I believe it'll show up. This will show you all your grids. So that's that. So if for some reason you lose it or get smashed into a million pieces and crap like that, you can go over here and you can actually delete the whole grid, and it'll help your game run faster. So this is our um, station. This is our little construction rig. And this is the gremlin we just built. All right, so what we're gonna do here is um, every hot bar I did, everything is messed up, it's odd. Hmm. That's really weird. Normally, normally when you build this thing, all these things work, so unfortunately we're gonna have to fix it. Alright, so hot bar 2 is usually where I put all my power systems and flight systems. So we're going to take our batteries, put them on 6. Oh, it's bugged out, so I'm going to have to relog, I think, to get it fixed. So, let's see. Let me see if they actually work. They do not work, so I think they're kind of bugged. So I'm going to have to fix that, and I will be back. All right, so that's fixed. All right, and so we have, we can fly around. All right, so hop bar one is gonna be kind of our main fly around one. Um, this actually has our things just like our normal, so two will bring up our grinder. Our grinder arm is on the right here, and we kind of need to make some room, so. Really? Interesting that. One thing to note, <laughs> <laughs> as you can see there, uh, about the tools on the ships is they are one of the weakest blocks in the entire game. So let's go ahead and dock this guy. We're going to open the K menu and go find our repair projector down here. We're going to toggle it back on since I turned it off earlier. And we're going to pop out of our ship. Need to refuel real quick. And now we have to rebuild that because I barely tapped the thing and it just exploded everywhere, which is stupid. Alright, so we have some motors down here. I forget exactly. One thing you can do, uh, as I have, you can kind of modularly use the blueprints to kind of rip off those tools and replace them. Uh, you can also, it's really, they're really simple, they're almost the same components, just they're slightly different. So you can, um, large tube here. 
so you can uh, just manually rip it apart and carry an extra, I think, motors and tubes. Yeah, there's two motors more for the welder and two tubes more for the grinder. So that's the only real difference. So when you construct large tube computers, construction components. Rises. Inventory, let's drop all these. One large tube, computers, construction components. Uh, do I not grab construction components? Well, we don't even need them all to finish it, so I'm not worried about it. Same thing with that. I'm not worried about you at the moment. Alright. So what we can do is try to bypass that annoying ass bug. So the engines are still on. So we're gonna uh, four is force lock and nine is force unlock. Eight will toggle it on and off. This thing is really agile when there's nothing on it. So you might even wish to put um, your gyros on your hotbar to increase and decrease their power effectiveness so that when you're empty you can decrease it so you don't whip around too quickly which is probably one of the reasons why I knocked off that grinder. Uh, but once you start loading it up you'll need those extra gyros to maneuver a little more uh, effectively. So we're going to rip apart some of these things and this thing can carry quite a bit. It started at about 40k just shy of 40,000 kilograms worth of weight. This thing can hold an extra 60, maybe 65 kilograms. So you're looking at about 100, uh, 100,000 kilograms of max weight before you start having uh, huge problems with maneuvering and all that good stuff. So what we're gonna do is gonna, I'm gonna grind apart some of the ship here uh, to get some components on hand. And then we're going to get uh, we're going to adjust the inventory so that I can uh, build some solar panels. And then we are going to work on getting our miner constructed. So we'll do all these. Up. Because it can carry a whole bunch of stuff. And this is one reason why I play with realistic inventory settings. It is kind of a pain to build this ship, but once you've got it, you can carry a ton of inventory in it. And it'll allow you to build things at a pretty rapid pace, something that you're used to if you play with times 10, and time, times 10 inventory, times 5 welders and grinders. And I mean, some people would prefer it that way. I just feel like what's the point of playing a game in which you build spaceships to do stuff for you when you don't actually use the spaceships to do the stuff for you. So it's just my personal preference. If you don't want to play, obviously just dial up the things, it'll go faster for you, and go from there. All the tips still work the same, it just takes me a little longer to do some things, and I'm more required to use ships for certain tasks, and it's going to take more trips to do things, but it feels like an accomplishment when you have to do five or six mining trips with your little mining vessel in order to uh, expand your base into what it is instead of like one or two trips, which to me is a little bit silly. Because it just kind of trivialized my strip miner uh, that I built because I didn't really even need it. Because it uh, on the higher inventory settings, I can get just as much uh, resources from uh, my small miner as to build my big miner in like one trip. And it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So let's hook this up. I'm going to frame, lock that up. We'll go to hop bar number two. And what we can do is we'll push 5, which will shut down all of our engines. We'll press 6. What? That's odd and very bad. I'm surprised. I didn't have problems. Okay, so it should be... Battery should be on recharge. Oh, I'm, I might have messed it up when I put my thing on here. So these batteries are on on. I think it messed these up. So we're going to put our batteries back here and we want them on recharge. So now we're connected and we put the batteries on recharge. Now they, if we go in a first person, our displays should work. We have 20 days worth of power. Uh, over here we have some damage to our cockpit and LCD and all that stuff. I don't know why. 
Probably because I didn't finish them. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I finished them. All right, so on the left, it actually shows us all the components that we have in this specific ship. Uh, the LCD stuff is a little bit advanced. Uh, it's using an LCD script. But my ship's generally set up so that it should work fairly well for you when you first start out. Uh, you can see your battery charge directly in the middle ahead there. It's at 38.8, uh, 39% of its total charge. Uh, it should, yeah, charge time, there it is. It take 10 minutes to charge the batteries on this thing. So we can kind of let it sit here and after 10 minutes it'll fully charge itself. So what we want to do now is I believe I saw the sun setting over there. So more than likely the sun's going to come up over here and I believe it moves a lot. So it's going to be kind of going up and around here. So I'm thinking, honestly, without rotors, one of the best things to do is to flat out um, just lay, lay the panels out on like real life, which that's a horrible idea. If we just come out here and run out of hydrogen, which is kind of bad. Do, do, do. Be nice. Eventually, later on with these inventory settings, what I'll do is uh, I will carry one bottle around later when I'm planning my base, and I will float around with it, and I just have no tools or anything, and um, uh, one hydro one hydrogen bottle will keep me aloft for a good amount of time while I just place blocks. Works out. So let's come over here. We're gonna build a long little tail here. Oops. It's a cool addition because it used to be insane where you'd have to you'd have to have like a whole armor bar dedicated to your light blocks with every freaking angled block and corner block and all that nonsense. But now you can just mouse wheel through all the different block types, which is a large improvement. You just have to pay attention and actually uh, make sure you're using the right one. So we're going to lay this on its side here and we'll put it a little bit away from the lander. And we're gonna build we're gonna build six of these. So we're gonna do three there. And then over here we'll build three more. Really? I don't think I do my hydrogen that quickly. Da, 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 da. So we'll go over here. Some more fuel. And then we'll get those built. And once those are built, our power concerns will not be much of an issue any longer. Uh, if nothing else, you can just shut down all your things and let the game run and it'll power your, it'll basically eventually uh, power all your stuff back up. So I probably should have built these out further to be honest. It'll be fine. Probably build more once we get resources coming in until we find a more permanent power locate, solution location for our uh, primary base. Uh, plus we have, we don't even need solar panels, we have uh, uranium. So what we're going to do is go in here, I'm going to show you how the inventory system on this thing works. I'm going to get those things built and then we're going to call it an episode. So you're going to open up your inventory. If you write COMP here, uh, I labeled all of my storage containers on this thing. Uh, I put components in the name. Each of these things are called components, so it will actually pull them up, so like this container doesn't have component written anywhere, but since these are components, it will show them in a search. So when these are empty, they still show up. So it's easier for you to just come over here, grab our, oh, I lied. I thought it did look for the tag, but apparently it doesn't. It only looks for this component here. So what we want to do and to alleviate that is cargo container, and we can just makeshift add these in so all these cargo containers will always show up in our search so if you go here and you type in a component since there's no components in this bin uh, now we can grab stuff here so those are 64 each so that's 300 and that's all of them 384 that's exactly enough so we'll grab those and then I don't even know what else they use but here's the thing now I think this thing can carry everything we currently have. I think we need some large tubes, which we already have, and 
grab all these. Put those up there. And combine all this into one. Alright, so that should be everything I need. I have more than enough carrying capacity for all that. I don't know if I need computers, but I'm going to take most of my computers with me. And we'll see. That should work out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're on control bar 2. We're going to press 7 to power up our engine so we don't drop like a stone. And we're going to push 6 to allow our batteries to power our engines. They're currently recharging only and will not power anything, so we'll press 6. So your 6 should say off, your 7 should say on in order to be safe to disconnect. So we are, we'll press 9, press 8 so we don't get rubber banded back. And then we'll come over here and we will... Uh, we'll go to hotbar 2 and fix it. Where's our grinder? Then this is, I usually put the toggle on grind on hotbar 2 so you can toggle the grinder off, the welder on, and we'll come up here and build these. And if you saw me building that sensor and wondering what it's for, the sensor will shut off your grinders and welders if you or one of your allies is within range of it, which basically means you won't get yourself killed if you accidentally leave them on, which I totally have done many times. So I started adding that sensor thing to uh, these designs. I guess the, the miner does the same thing. It will kill you with the drills. One of the differences with the miner uh, for me is that <clears throat> I generally, I very rarely toggle, especially my small miner, toggle it on. I just left click myself because it, because uh, one huge difference you'll notice as soon as I get out to a mine with my uh, Midas is that in realistic inventory settings, um, you your mining trips are almost instant, really, and you'll see how quickly the ship fills up. So you'll go and you'll get about 26,000 ore it'll carry, and you can go to the mine and it'll take you less than two or three minutes to actually fill up your cargo hold. So it'll be a lot more traveling time versus mining time when it comes to that which might incentivize you to use wheeled vehicles. I will once they fix wheels, they're just so bad, I never deal with them. So this will be done and we'll be good on power after that for the most part. Um, we can also grind apart some things to fill up the ship with components to build more things. Um, I think, however, instead of using this, because it's a little finicky to build small grid ships with this guy and I actually built in some interesting features to use it as a construction ship, but it requires uh, it requires something else to make it work. And I will demonstrate that in the next video when I build our mining ship. So thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.